Hi, in this video, we are going to configure purchase event for Google Analytics 4. So you can track Shopify purchases and see where the traffic acquisition is coming in from and more details about the users. There are three prerequisites of this video. You are supposed to have a Google Tag Manager container, a Google Analytics 4 property and a Shopify account. Along with these accounts, you also need to make sure that your Google Tag Manager container is already configured on the Shopify stores and in-depth details about how to configure configure the tracking code on the front end as well as the final thank you pages you can refer to this link where you can find more details on how to configure google tag manager container on the shopify store uh, this video has been divided into four different sections, and in all of these sections, we are going to cover few different things in the first section we are going to configure the ga4 configuration tag so you can track the general events such as page view user engagement session start etc these are automatically configured events by google analytics so you don't have to do all kind of configurations we do have the option to control these events but that is not discussed briefly in this video in the second section we are going to discuss what kind of things you need to make sure that the developer has added on the final thank you pages so you can track the purchase event in the third section we are going to look at the code that we are using for this conversion event tracking and in the final step we will be configuring google tag manager to track these purchase events so let's get right into it let's head over to our google analytics account so we can get the measurement id measurement id is a unique id for your particular data stream and data stream is something that connects your web store to your google analytics account it is just like a pipeline that just deliver data from one endpoint to another end. To get the measurement ID on your Google Analytics account, on the bottom left corner, click the admin and the second column, which is basically properties column, you can click on data stream. If you already have a data stream, then click on the web data stream and select the measurement ID. If you don't have a data stream, you can click on the blue button which says add stream and then you can create a web stream for yourself. As we have copied that measurement ID, let's head back to the Google Tag Manager and create a variable. We can create variable so we don't have to copy and paste the value again and again, and we can refer to the same variable once we have created that. So on the left side, you can see the option for variables, and we are going to create one user-defined constant variable. As the measurement ID is going to be the same, we don't have to create any custom loading things for this one. So let's search for constant. Let's paste the value and let's rename the tag to GA4 measurement ID. Don't worry about my spellings, you don't have to be perfect with that. Once you have created the variable, let's go back to the tags and create a tag that will fire on all the pages of the Shopify store and will send the page view event. Let's create new on the top right corner and for the triggers, we are going to select the built-in trigger for all pages. And under the tag configuration, if you are using the older version of Google Analytics, you might see a GA4 configuration tag. However, if this is a new Google Tag Manager container account, you will see an option for Google Tags. You can access it right through here or you can go to Google Analytics and then select Google Tag. Once you are in the Google Tag, you need a tag ID. The tag ID is something that we just created a few minutes ago. So let's just select the GA4 measurement ID for this tag. Let's rename this tag as GT. GA4 configuration tag. Perfect. Let's hit save and hit preview to test if our page view event is firing properly on all the pages of the Shopify store or not. Let's connect the debug window with our Shopify store. I have this demo store which does not have much going on but it still has some products. So let's go to the product page and see if the page view event is firing. Let's open the debug window and we can see that on the first page the configuration tag has fired on the container loaded event and it has sent one page view request on the home page and one page you request on the product page. On your Google Analytics account, you can also verify this information by going to the admin and de debug view. If your store is connected with the debug view of Google Tag Manager container, that is only when you are going to see these events. So we have two page view events coming in and everything should be good. So for the second section, we need to send some code back to the developer so they can add some data layer event, which we can use to track the conversion event. To get the script that you can de send directly to the developer, you can head to down to the description box and you can find a link where you can find PDF that you have to send to the developer with all the instructions. So this concludes the section two of the video. In the third section of this video, we are going to see how you can add the code yourself if you have some sort of programming skills. The code we are going to use is also in the description and you can find that code. So once you have copied that code from the description below, head over to your Shopify store and on the bottom of the screen, you can see an option for settings. Under the setting, you will find an option for checkout 
and once you will scroll all the way down you will see an option for order status script pages under additional scripts you might see the google tag manager container that we have added in the last video and right below that we are going to paste the script we just copied this script is basically pushing a custom purchase event and it has all the details that are required for the conversion event let's hit save so all the changes have been saved in the store let's go back to the shopify store and do a checkout in to see if that alert event is working all right or not let's hit checkout let's create a dummy user i have already made two tests transactions on this store so let's just do test 3 uh, now I'm going to add a test bogus card so that we can make a test transaction uh, these details are not supposed to be accurate so it's alright perfect now the store has redirected us to the final thank you page and if you will go back to the debug window you should see the custom purchase event that has fired on this page so this is the cart page this is the checkout page and this is the custom purchase event that has fired let's go to the API call to see what kind of event details we have so the name of the event is custom purchase and it has the timestamp of the event that has fired the transaction ID total value order count and all these other details we also have some other information for user data although this user data is only required for google ads conversion tag it is just there for uh, use in case anyone needs so we basically have all the information and now all we need to do is make sure that our google tag manager is configured properly so it can track all of this information so in the next section number four of this video we are going to configure the google tag manager container so it can fire the tags and trigger with all the event parameters that are required Let's head back to the Google Tag Manager container. This is the section 4. Uh, the first thing we need to do is create a trigger that fire on that particular event. Uh, it is always better to copy and paste the name of this trigger. So let's just head back, copy this name. Go back to the Google Tag Manager, click on top right corner which says new. Uh, this is a custom event. So we are going to go for a custom event which says custom event underscore purchase. The reason we are using custom underscore purchase instead of the standard name of purchase is because there might be some other tags and plugins or app you might be using which is using the standard name for the shop GA4 event name we don't want our event to mismatch or fire with any other event therefore we are using a custom underscore purchase you can use something else like gtm underscore purchase or anything that you want but it, this is just a pref uh, on the analytics account let's head back to the tags we need to create a tag that will fire the event on the custom purchase events let's hit new and select the trigger we just created under the tags we are going to go for ga4 events tag and the measurement id is the same we just created a variable in the beginning of the video and we are going to refer that in the event name that we want to send back is the purchase we don't want to send custom underscore purchase because that is not recognized as a standard event so once we have added that we need to send additional information back to the ga4 there are two options to do that uh, the first option is under more settings you can select send e-commerce data and it will automatically select all the information such as e-commerce dot items array currency value and all these other details so this is the easier option however there is one second option in case some of the data that is not being picked up you can create your own variable and refer them so we are going to go with the second option uh, first of all completely fine too in the second option you can add all the event variables separately like items value and all these things one by one or you can create one variable that google tag manager has introduced recently it is called google tag event settings parameter and what that variable can do is that you can refer to that variable for view item add to cart purchase and all the other events too so in this video we are going to use that event variable and create it once so we don't have to create it again and again so under the variable section let's hit new variable it will automatically redirect us to the google tag event setting variables we are going to select all the parameters that we have so we need to create a few different spaces i remember some of them we need items we need value we need currency there should be text shipping what else value or oh, we already did value let's go back to the debug window and see okay we need transaction id so let's select that do we have anything else coupon let's also select coupon all right so these are the standard variables that we need to send with all the purchase events in order to get the values of this event they are inside the data layer so we need to refer to that data layer variable so for example this items value is basically this items array that we have here and in order to access it we need to go inside this e-commerce object and then access the items variable uh, we talked about this that how to access all these variables so to access these items we need to use the dot annotation because everything under e-commerce is in an object so it should be e-commerce dot items so let's go back to the tag manager and create a data layer variable which will access that 
particular items array. Let's hit new. Let's select the data layer and let's do e-commerce dot items. At this clipboard, you can just hit window and V and this will enable the key clipboard that you can use. So let's save this one. Uh, we, need, we need to do the same thing for value. So again, the value is inside e-commerce dot value. So we are going to create another data layer variable. It should be e-commerce dot value. Perfect. Now we need to do the same thing for currency. Let's go back to the tag manager debug window and see where the currency parameter is. So it is also under e-commerce dot currency. Let's click on the plus icon to create a new data layer variable. So this one should be e-commerce dot currency. Perfect. Uh, we need to create a similar thing for tax. So let's do that. Uh, now we have to do this for shipping. Uh, so we can also track how much it is costing us for the shipping. Uh, we don't have to process any of this data inside the GA4. We just need to make sure that the data is being sent in the required field that are mentioned here, such as items, value, currency, tax, shipping, transaction ID, etc. As long as all of these details are sent properly, we don't have to do anything else. And Google Analytics 4 will automatically track all the reports and conversions. Let's also select coupon. And this is the last variable that we are sending under the default required parameter for GA4. Let's hit save. And now we have all of these variables. Let's rename the tag to Google Tag Event Settings. And these are EEC Event Parameters. EEC just stands for Enhanced E-Commerce. Let's hit Save. Now we have the parameters that are inherited from this variable. So we can see items, currency, and all of other details are there. Let's rename the tag to GA4 EEC Purchase. Hit Save. Let's hit Preview and test if everything is working all right and the tag we have created are working perfectly fine or not. Right now, I would also like to mention one more thing that by default, when you're using Google Tag Manager with the base Shopify account, you don't get access to the slash checkout route. That means you cannot track events such as add shipping info and add payment info. Also begin checkout event because these three events ideally fires on the slash checkout route. However, in the last video, we discussed how you can hijack the button click event on the website to track the begin checkout event. If you have missed that tutorial, you can go here and watch the whole video. Now we are on the website. Let's go to the catalog and select one of the product and then do a checkout to see if everything is working or instead of doing add to cart, I'm just directly buying the product, but you can walk through the normal process. So these are the slash checkout page. And if you go back to the debug window, you will see that these pages are not tracked by default in GA4. So let's create another test user, test double zero for at tested.com okay let's hit continue uh, we don't have shipping there but most of the time the shipping uh, information is always zero uh, this is a development store so we can use a bogus card and one two three four one two three let's hit pay now now we are being redirected to the final thank you page and if we will go to the debug window we can see that the custom purchase event has fired and we can also see that a ga4 e-commerce event purchase tag has also fired and on the ga4 container on the top, you can see all the GTAG container that had fired on this page. And we can see that it has sent a purchase event. And this purchase event has the coupon parameter, the transaction ID, shipping, tax value, and the e-commerce product that we have sent. It also has the currency parameter. There are two more ways to verify this event. You can go back to the analytics and under the admin and debug view, if the debug view is connected, you can scroll all the way up to the latest event and click on the purchase. You see that the purchase has a flag on it. It is because by default, purchase event is custom conversion. So you don't have to do anything and it will be counted as a conversion by default. We do have the value, transaction ID, tax, shipping, currency, and you can see another row for items where we have item id quantity and all these other details you can also verify this information from the real-time reports that you have on your google analytics account however the only drawback from the real-time reports is that you cannot see the items array and you can just see all the other details such as you can click on the purchase event and then you can see page path currency and text shipping and all these other good things the last thing is to publish the changes so all the changes are not in the draft mode and they are published on the website so let's just do that that GA4 purchase event. Let's hit publish. And now your Shopify store is tracking all of the events. Once the traffic has been registered, it may take 24 hours for GA4 to process the data. However, in the e-commerce report, we can see the test conversion we did two days ago on the store so that we can show you how the reports actually look like. So once the conversion is made, it will show you item revenue, items purchased, and all these other details in the same page. As we have item name and item ID, you can select both of things and it will show you the reports based on that. You can also go to overview to look at the same reports and you will have the information that you need here. So if there are any particular question, you can comment down. If you want to see how you can track more events for GA4, you can refer to this.